Hi, everyone. My name is Lori Peek, and I am the principal investigator for the National Science Foundation supported Converge facility, which is headquartered at the Natural Hazard Center at the University of Colorado Boulder. Converge is dedicated to connecting researchers across disciplines to advance ethical, interdisciplinary, convergence-oriented research. On behalf of the entire team, it is our pleasure to welcome you to the Converge webinar series. Today, during this brief 30-minute demonstration webinar, we are going to share the latest Converge training module, which focuses on understanding and ending gender-based violence in fieldwork. Jerrica Heinze, who served as the lead developer for this module and who will be our presenter today, actually ran a two hour Zoom training session for us about a year ago at the Natural Hazard Center. It was a deeply enlightening and moving session. And afterwards, the team here all agreed that the content that Jerrica shared with us was absolutely vital and something that none of us had received in all of our prior years of formal education. We are so honored that Jerrica agreed to partner with us to develop this module, and we thank you all for joining with us today. A few logistical items before proceeding any further. This webinar is being recorded. The captioned recording and slides will be posted on the Converge website at converge.colorado.edu. Should you have any questions or comments during the webinar, please use the Q&A box or the chat box. If we were unable to get to any of your questions or comments during this brief webinar, we will post written responses on the Converge webinar webpage for this session. One of the major tasks of the Converge project is to accelerate the education and training of a diverse next generation of hazards and disaster researchers and practitioners. We recognize that disaster research is often highly event driven. In order for the field to progress, it is crucial that those new to this area of study have access to already existing research and an understanding of various methodological approaches and potential ethical challenges. To help, our Converge research team is creating a series of free online training modules that are specifically designed for students, emerging researchers and practitioners, and others new to the field who hope to quickly background themselves on relevant research information. Thus far, we have released modules focused on social vulnerability, disaster mental health, cultural competence, institutional review board or IRB procedures for extreme events research, conducting emotionally challenging research, and as you will hear about today, understanding and ending gender-based violence in field work. Over the coming years, we will continue to offer individual certificates for each of these modules while also building toward a credentialing system for hazards and disaster researchers to help ensure a minimum competence in the field. I am also excited to share that thanks to a newly established partnership with the International Association of Emergency Managers or IAEM, we can now offer one contact hour of general management training for each completed Converge training module through the IAEM certi certi certificate, certificate program. Um, and as you can see on the certificate that's in front of you, Rachel Adams worked to add a little um, emblem that shows that once you complete any of our modules, you receive that one credit hour. These training modules can also be used as a classroom assignment or a competency requirement to ensure that students and others new to the field have a baseline level of knowledge and skills as they move forward with their efforts. To further encourage classroom adoption, we have partnered with educators to create the Converge Training Modules Assignment Bank. Thus far, we have seven model assignments posted online for classes at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. 
to all the other educators out there, if you have used the Converge training modules in your classroom, we would welcome your contribution to the assignment bank. Please reach out to us at converge at colorado.edu if you have an assignment to share. Now, we are going to turn to the demonstration portion of the webinar. You will hear today from Jerrica Heinze, founder of the Fieldwork Initiative, which is an extraordinary organization that addresses sexual harassment in research fieldwork worldwide and serves as one of the globe's leading advocacy organizations. As mentioned previously, Jerrica expertly led the development of this new module and has been a teacher, guide, inspiration, um, and mentor to all of us here at the Natural Hazards Center. So Jerrica, over to you. Thank you so much for that introduction, Lori. Um, and as Lori mentioned, uh, my name is Jerrica Heinze, and I worked on reviewing the literature and developing the narrative that appears in this module. Uh, the module was developed in partnership with the Fieldwork Initiative, an advocacy space on fieldwork trauma, uh, to address some of the most common fallacies regarding gendered violence and sexual assault in the field. I'm going to start by providing a broad definition of gender-based violence. Um, throughout the module, we will use the United Nations definition of gender-based violence to refer to any act of violence that results in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, mental, or economic harm inflicted in public or private life. According to the United Nations Population Fund, gender-based violence is a somewhat more inclusive term than violence against women. This could include violence against men, provided that violence stems from a man's gender identity or representation. Gender-based violence could also apply to violence experienced by gender non-conforming people. Furthermore, gender-based violence can refer to acts against those whose sexual orientation does not align with dominant heterosexual frameworks and expectations. Throughout the module, the term gender is intended to be inclusive of all identities existing on the gender spectrum. With those definitions in mind, I'm going to provide an overview of the understanding and ending gender-based violence in fieldwork module. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge that this is a lot of text you're seeing here. So I just uh, want to you know, first take a moment to orient you. What you can see right now is that the understanding and ending gender-based violence in fieldwork training module is organized into five lessons. Background, addressing misconceptions, problems during fieldwork, reporting violence and seeking help, and recommendations for self-advocacy and structural change. Within each of these lessons are different topics which present interactive information that aims to achieve a specific set of learning objectives. By the end of this module, participants should be able to define gender-based violence in fieldwork and understand its key identifying characteristics, learn how common gender-based violence in fieldwork is, understand the history of problematic fieldwork experiences that have resulted in incidents of gender-based violence, recognize how to separate misconceptions about gender-based violence from realities in fieldwork, understand the difference between necessary difficulties and unnecessary discrimination and violence in the field, learn about the various contexts of problematic fieldwork through case studies, and published literature focused on solitude, danger, and intimacy. Understand aspects of heightened risk and prevalent dangers associated with gender-based violence. Understand barriers to reporting violence. Learn how trauma impacts decision-making. Develop strategies to overcome barriers to reporting. Access resources that offer help recognize the power of the researcher to set their own boundaries, learn best practices and violent prevention strategies ultimately. On the right hand side of the page, there's a tracking bar where you can track your progress as you move through the module lessons and topics. Once you have completed a topic, you can always go back and review at a later time. Now I'm gonna show you some of the module content. 
Although gender-based violence during fieldwork is commonplace, it's difficult to collect accurate data on its prevalence as few people are willing to share or report those experiences. Given feelings of shame and fears of retaliation that survivors of gender-based violence may experience, it's an, it is understandable why limitations in data availability represent the biggest barriers to understanding its prevalence among researchers in fieldwork settings. Outside of the small number of those specifically researching and teaching about this topic in academia and elsewhere, gender-based violence among researchers, including in fieldwork settings, remains a taboo topic. What we do know, however, is that a significant number of researchers experience gender-based violence while participating in field research or in the daily activities of their professional careers. While this is a problem for every member of the scientific community, researchers who identify as women, as LGBTQIA plus researchers, and as researchers of, of color are at a particularly heightened risk for experiencing gender-based violence. Throughout this module, we provide case studies and stories from the field to illustrate content. For example, in the background lesson, we include an excerpt from Ellen Lieberman's The Changing Face of Fieldwork, which illustrates some of the gender dynamics that have been historically present in fieldwork. And here I quote from Lieberman. Indeed, there was a time not that long ago when a female scientist doing fieldwork had, had to ask permission just to be there. Tatiana Ryerson points out to Rita Horner, a pioneering University of Washington oceanographer. In 1973, she was the first woman scientist allowed on a US Coast Guard icebreaker to continue her studies of phytoplankton in the Arctic. In a 2000 interview recorded for an oral history of polar exploration, Horner recounted how that particular barrier broke. Of course, the Coast Guard had to make a decision and they finally did. They decided that I could go and they were very unhappy about it, she recalled. And of course, within the first two hours, I'll bet you every single person, crewman on that ship, walked by the lab I was going to be in to see what was this woman look like. While the gender gap in science is slowly closing, women are still vastly underrepresented. A 2010 U US National Research Council study found that only 36% of assistant professors and 27% of tenured candidates in biology were female, despite more women than men earning doctorates. According to the UNESCO in Institute of Statistics, less than 30% of the world's researchers are women. Men are still more likely to receive tenure and earn more money than their female counterparts. So this is just one of the field stories from researchers that are featured throughout the module. Uh, to really enhance understanding of the material covered with real world examples. In addition to the modules written and interactive visual content, we have compiled a list of additional resources relevant to gender based violence and fieldwork. Within the resource tab at the top right hand corner of the screen, we provide links to networks and supporting organizations, other trainings and web resources that you can access. And please note that you must be logged into the module to access these resources. Okay. At the end of the module, you can take a 10 question quiz to assess what you've learned. All in all, this module takes approximately 60 minutes to complete. If you are an instructor considering these for classroom use, please know that we have a quiz bank that is on a random generator which means that if you assign this to your students, they will not get the same questions. If you get at least eight out of 10 questions correct, you will receive a certificate of completion with your name on it and the date. And you can save this certificate as a PDF and also access it at a later date throughout your training module account. As previously mentioned, these certificates indicate that the user has earned one contact hour of general management training credit through the IAEM certification program. I'm now going to turn over to the demonstration portion of this webinar. And while Lori's getting that screen ready, uh, let me just remind everyone that you can register for the module at converge.colorado.edu slash training modules. Okay, so I'm now going to walk you through a demonstration of this module. And this module covers a number of important topics related to understanding and ending gender-based violence. 
One lesson defines gender-based violence and discusses its prevalence in fieldwork. Another focuses on addressing misconceptions about gender-based violence in the field. The third highlights the potential problems researchers can encounter while in the field. The fourth discusses how to report violence and seek help. And the last lesson provides recommendations for self-advocacy and structural change. For the sake of time, I'm going to guide you through the addressing misconceptions lesson. And this section of the module addresses common beliefs um, regarding research and fieldwork within academia, as well as in broader public opinion in regards to sexual violence. It also discusses the difference between acceptable and unacceptable struggles of field research. The first topic in this lesson is debunking myths. Myths about sexual violence and fieldwork parallel practices of victim blaming and misplaced cause attribution within American culture. Academia is not exempt from these larger trends, which are perpetrated and absorbed in media, through jurisprudence, and within politics. Unlearning misconceptions surrounding fieldwork is paramount to ensuring healthy, realistic, and safer experiences for researchers. In the slide below, we utilize insights from the Fieldwork Initiative to explain how these misconceptions are not just problematic, but they contribute to potentially dangerous environments. And for the sake of time, I'll read through the first two. First, students or early career researchers should expect trouble if they go alone to dangerous places to do fieldwork. Gendered violence and sexual assault are not the problem of any one country, culture, community, economic class, or religion. It is a human problem that defies time and space. Sexual assault has happened to researchers across the globe, as demonstrated from this map of the locations that Fieldwork Initiative research respondents have experienced sexualized harassment and gendered violence. Number two, sexual assault and harassment are a woman's issue. Trauma and sexual harassment or assault in the field are problems faced by everybody, regardless of their gender. In fact, transgender men and transgender women faced heightened risk of daily harassment, bullying, assault, and murder. The fieldwork experience is inherently marked by gender, sexuality, race, and other identity formations, which interact with local power dynamics and gender roles. Furthermore, there are many contexts in which individuals who identify as men are at disadvantage due to fieldwork inaccessibility. For example, men might struggle to find research participants in studies focusing on childbirth and sex work. The next topic focuses on differentiating acceptable from unacceptable issues. Unforeseen issues and ethical dilemmas can and will occur. However, understanding the difference between normal fieldwork struggles and unacceptable fieldwork issues means knowing when to establish boundaries, seek help, or leave the field. Here we include a chart to help illustrate some prominent examples of each category. The left side of the table denotes general difficulties that are an inherent part of the research process. These struggles, when viewed within the benefit of time, often even prove to be valuable experiences that strengthen one as a, as a field researcher. The right side showcases degrading, unsafe, or traumatic experiences, situations, or thoughts, which can have a lasting negative effect on the researcher. The last topic in this section, unlearning notions of good and bad fieldwork, describe how preconceived ideas about fieldwork can also create adverse outcomes. For instance, notions of good and bad fieldwork rely on the dubious perspective that the researcher is responsible for all aspects of the fieldwork environment. This is impractical and unrealistic, but pervades cultures around fieldwork. Fears of being deemed a bad researcher are often what makes survivors of gender-based violence apprehensive about sharing their experiences. These standards contribute to culminating pressures, which make scholars feel they cannot leave their field site and must welcome or endure uncomfortable and potentially violent situations. White women, women of color, members of the LGBTQIA community and disabled scholars are most at risk for trauma in the field and may be labeled as conducting bad fieldwork. This is due to the fact that sexual violence and discrimination were not a part of the white male fieldwork experience from which the good fieldwork standard was historically born. At the end of each lesson, there's a brief knowledge check, which is a two question quiz to make sure the user is engaged and paying attention. 
The knowledge check does not count towards the final quiz. For those joining in via your screen, you can see two multiple choice questions. The first question asks, true or false? It is important that scholars know the difference between good and bad fieldwork so they can avoid engaging in what others might label bad fieldwork. There are two, resp two response options, true and false. I'm going to press false here. The second question asks, which of the following statements best describes imposter syndrome? The response options are when researchers aren't accepted as insiders in their field. Next, when people erroneously feel like a fraud and doubt their own accomplishments or feel like they haven't earned their positions. When students lie about their credentials in order to get into a university or get hired onto a research project or when somebody's personal identity and experience don't match the place or topic where they're doing their research. I'm gonna press the second option. And to submit my responses, I press finish assessment. And I now have the option to view questions and check whether I got the questions correct. And as you can see, both of my answers are correct. And I wanna to point one more thing out during this demonstration. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the module has a resource tab where additional resources are listed that can support researchers engaged in fieldwork. These resources include networks and supporting organizations, training resources, and other web resources related to gender-based violence. Each of these resources is also hyperlinked. For example, if I press the fieldwork initiative link, they will bring me to, to the organization's website. And that concludes our demonstration today. And we are now going to return to the webinar slides. We hope that this webinar has been helpful for you today. We also wanna let you know that the next Converge training module to be, uh, will be released, uh, will focus on broader ethical considerations and extreme events research. We will be hosting a brief demonstration webinar much like this one for that module and others that are part of this series and they will be as they come available. Um, a few reminders before I turn this back over to Lori to close out the session. Uh, to contact us about any questions or suggestions you may have, um, please email us at converge at colorado.edu. To register for and access the Converge training modules as well as this module recording, please visit the Converge website at converge.colorado.edu. Lori, thank you, back over to you. Erica, thank you so much for that um, presentation and also for the demonstration of the module. And um, again, it, is, it has been a true gift for our team here to have the opportunity to work with and to learn from you over these past several months. And so just a special thanks to you and to our participants out there. I think we're gonna have a few minutes at the end of this for Q&A. And so if you do have questions, please drop those into either the chat box or the Q&A box. And as you can see, Jerrica is still here with us and can definitely respond um, to your questions. So please keep those coming. So a couple of other um, things I wanted to share before we close out. So on behalf of our entire training modules team and with a special tip of the hat to our lead developers, Rachel Adams and Candace Evans, we wanted to make sure and give an update to our viewers this month uh, on the status of the modules. And so to date, 2,765 people have registered for the Converge training modules. And thus far, 973 people have successfully completed the social vulnerability and disasters module. 486 have completed the disaster mental health module. 407 have completed the cultural competence module. 261 have completed the IRB module and 152 have completed the emotionally challenging research module. And that um, tier structure that you see there is definitely related to how long these modules have been available. So at our next webinar, we'll look forward to reporting how many of you have completed our most recent module. 
Um, we also want to make sure and um, say a special thanks to the National Science Foundation that has provided the support for the broader Converge initiative as well as for the development of this training module. And we also want to acknowledge the entire team here at the Natural Hazard Center. Everyone, every single person here has contributed this module in some way, either through reviewing, testing, or otherwise supporting this effort. Our undergraduate and graduate students and other full-time team members all took the time to carefully review this module and to provide Jerica and the other developers with detailed field feedback. Um, we also want to thank all of you for being with us today. And so with that, I'm going to pause right there and note that we do have about five minutes remaining. And I see one question in the Q&A and then I'll bounce over to the chat. So I'll start there. Um, Francisco asks, can participants get PhD credit toward PE license continuing education by completing the different modules? If yes, that would make it easier for others to participate. And so Francisco, thank you for raising that. And um, we actually just developed this relationship with the International Association of Emergency Management, Management Managers to get the um, general management training. And so if you might be willing to drop us an email at converge at colorado.edu with any details or links that you could provide on how we might um, try to start developing those relationships for the PE licensing. We would love to learn more and thank you for raising that. And we should also note that Rachel also always puts these up on the CDC train website. So we are trying to reach different user communities, public health, social science, emergency management, and Francisco, to your question, hopefully engineering in the future as well. So if you can help us with any contacts, we would greatly appreciate it. So thank you for that. And then um, let's see, uh, Luciana says, oh, do you have translation into other languages of your training module? So at present, Luciana, that is a great question. And at present, we do not have these translated into other um, languages. And Jerrica, I don't know if through the fieldwork initiative, have you translated your trainings or other materials into other languages through, through your initiative? Um, I have done the training in Spanish um, as a hosting in Spanish, um, but the materials have not yet been translated. Um, the website has a, we're working on the website to have a Spanish um, component. Um, and the goal is to have many languages as well, having it globally accessible to communities that are um, not necessarily English speaking. So that's something um, forthcoming on the horizon. That's fantastic. And Luciana, thank you so much for asking about that. And we actually know at present about 70% of our uh, users of these Converge training modules are located here in the US. But as more and more people are accessing these modules um, in other countries around the world, we're really excited about trying to make sure that these are as accessible as possible. So thank you for that question. And um, I also see that Melissa said that it's difficult to see um, some of the slides. And so Melissa, we apologize for that, but please know we'll be posting the slides as well as the video recording for this module online. So if you wanna do a deeper dive into anything we've shared here. And so Jerrica, before we sign off, do you have any final closing words that you wanna share with our participants today? I just want to thank everybody for both your participation today, as well as our team, everyone at Converge. Um, I really and truly hope that this is going to be, um, you know, a, a valuable experience to engage with the module with a learning takeaway of uh, safety, um, and that um, individuals feel empowered through the module to prioritize their own health and safety, um, and to really reimagine how we approach science and and how we approach fieldwork. So that's on, and a huge thank you to you, Lori, and to Rachel, and. Um, and, and to uh, Candice and everyone that has been involved. It's uh, really been a, a wonderful team to work on. Thank you, Jerrica, and thank you for everything you have done with this and um, for everything you have taught us and for putting this in a module format so that we can hopefully reach many, many more people. 
And so with that, we again want to thank everyone for being here today, and we hope that you will sign up for updates through the Converge website at converge.colorado.edu forward slash sign up. Thank you again for being here today. Thank you for the research and the practice work that you do. And please remember to take care of yourself and others. Have a great day, everyone.